Okay. Good evening and welcome to our series which is usually on Saturday today on Friday. Uh, we have a bun here in Bangalore so we're doing it from my house. I'm going to take you through the basics of weight loss and remember to block your calendars for every Saturday to come join us for different kinds of topics and different kinds of webinars. Now we've been doing a lot on weight loss the last week and I've been doing this challenge with myself. I haven't asked you all to join which is 45 days to Diwali. So today I'm going to show you how this works. Now, first I would like you to go and comment and tell, just say hi so that I know how many people are there, what kind of questions you have and I'd love to know where you're from. Just put that in, right? And I'm going to keep looking at it. So whenever there is a question, I'm going to take it up because this is going to get slightly complicated for some of you. Now to start off, on my 45 day goal, I had said that I'm going to try and burn 2000 calories per day. A lot of you asked me how to do 2000. I said I was going to burn 2000 and I was going to eat only 1500. If you want to lose weight, you need a deficit, which means that you need to burn more than you eat and you will get a deficit. In this case, it's 500 calories. Now, the Thing here is how fast will you lose weight? If you do this correctly and keep up 500 calorie deficit every day, you need to burn 7,040. That is, so it will take me 14 days to lose just one kg of body fat. Okay. Uh, all right. So 14 days. Now, this, how do we burn these 2,000 calories? Now, this is what we been asking we're going to be doing it from multiple things for so this i'm going to be explaining to you what dmr is so let's say the multiple ways to burn calories and this is how we read think of it as a triangle the majority of our calories are burnt via br your basal metabolic rate okay so this is how many calories you burn if you're doing absolutely nothing the whole day, it means you're just, if you just lie down and do nothing else, this is how much you will burn. Why do we burn when we're doing nothing else? It's to stay alive. For example, our brain uses about 600 calories. Your liver might use 150. Everything, everything uses a certain number of calories. You burn calories to breathe. So to keep you alive, if you don't move at all, the amount that you burn will be your BMR. Now in my case, it's about 13.75. Now, how do you get this value? You can get it by two ways. The simpler way to do it is you can use, let's say, the Harris Benedict. Um, formula. You can go online, just type out Harris Benedict BMR formula, enter your details. But just remember, it will not be 100% accurate because that takes into account just your age, weight, height, gender, etc. It doesn't take into account any hormonal issues that you might have which lower your BMR. It doesn't take into account your muscle mass and your body fat percentage which changes your BMR. It doesn't take these things into account. So it will give you an estimate. You can take a 20% variation or drop on it. I know mine is 1375 because I had done a DEXA scan which also gives you, which is probably the most accurate way to do it. But when I did formula it was about 1325 so it was pretty close to me now, now so 1375 but my calculation is going to be everyone's is different here okay now then you know people talk about certain kinds of foods that burn a lot of calories we call this thermic effect of food all right this is a very small portion in which calories are burnt so don't really bother about this it's not going to help the big pyramid now, a lot of your calories will come from what we call NEAT and the rest will come from exercise. Exercise, we all know what that is. You can get anywhere between 200 and 500 here. I mean, if it's a very aggressive workout, maybe even a thousand, it depends. NEAT is non-exercise activity. How much calories. So this is any form of movement. So for example, right now by just standing, burning more calories than if I was just lying down. If I walk to the bathroom and come back, if I do house, household chores, any activity that I do that is not exercise is still burning calories. So, but there is no way to sort of know how much household chores you did. So we track it by steps. Around 
10,000 steps is about 500 calories on average. Okay, so if mine is 1300 for my BMR, 500 from here, that's 1800, let's say about for me, I get only let's say about 300 from exercise, 13, 5, that's about 2000 calories. Yeah, that's how I will burn 2000 calories, but I have to eat 1500, right? Now just remember, this is what I said on the first day of the challenge was, on any given day, uh, that's very odd, give me a second. Uh, is, is the voice not clear? Voice is breaking continuously, voice is crashing, yikes. You know, this could be, hold on. Okay, I'm adjusting my mic. Is it better now? Can everyone quickly just tell me if it's better now? Let me know if it's okay. Please put it in the comments so I can see. Yeah, okay. So on any given day that you don't, this will remain the same usually. Any given day that you don't do 10,000 steps or if I did let's say 6,000 steps, then I would burn maybe only 300. And let's say I did not work out that day. So I get nothing here. So that will give me only 1600. And if I still eat 1500, that's a 100 deficit. But at this deficit and 7000 calories, it will take me close to 70 days to lose one kilo of weight. So when you don't meet any of these criteria, the number of days becomes more. That's all. Which is why when every week and every day you're trying to see if your weight has dropped, it cannot drop. It's supposed to take 14 days if you do all this to drop one kilo. So expecting to drop in three days or five days is not going to matter at all. It's not even going to work. Just checking if you've got, it's better now. Okay, great. So that means my mic was, my hair was getting in the way. Okay, because I just washed it also. All right. So if you're okay till here, this is how you burn 2000. Now BMR, check the Harris Benedict for yourself. It won't be completely accurate. But how do we increase BMR, right? Uh, there are multiple ways to do this. Your BMR will depend on multiple things, but there is research that was done that showed that when people were put, let's say on an 800 calorie deficit, uh, there were two groups. One was given diet, and cardio one was given diet and resistance training one was given and then another study had a third group which was only diet they found that the one that did diet plus resistance training had the greatest loss in fat whereas the one that did with just cardio or just diet draw nearly as much weight but it was not from fat they were losing lean muscle mass as well now what happens when you do resistance training or any form of strength training is that you, uh, muscles require more calories they are think of them as high maintenance and expensive resource to have it's like having a same banana at home instead of having a yorkshire terrier yorkshire terrier eats very little they're tiny that's what i have she's outside but our jane same banana is going to go through like a kilo kilo and a half of food they're just high maintenance right if you have muscle muscle needs more food like a same banana it is high maintenance which means that you can eat more and you burn more calories doing nothing which means your BMR starts going up. So resistance training is probably one of the best ways to increase your BMR. There are a few others. One would include sleeping for seven to eight hours, getting enough sleep, uh, fixing your circadian or biological clock, right? Uh, exposing yourself to sunlight in the morning. There are multiple ways to do this, but the one that has a maximum effect and the as quickly as possible is a resistance training that include that increases BMR okay and the other issue is that when you do cardio what happens is people say oh you know I did cardio and I lost 600 calories my cardio burned 600 calories but when I do weight training I only burn uh, 300 calories so obviously I should do uh, cardio right uh, actually no because with cardio you burn calories in the time you're doing it let's say you burn 600 calories in one hour that's it 600 done but in resistance training because there's muscle building and the way it is built which is called epoch what happens is you burn 300 in that hour right but you burn additional calories for the next 24 to 48 hours depending on how good or bad the exercise was 
right which means that now your total need for the day has automatically gone up not here in you can take an either of those two has automatically gone up to burn more calories in a day right so in the long run um a proper is resistance training workout is better for you i'm going to check the comments again if you have anything please put them in i didn't understand from start hmm i guess you can repeat it from the beginning would be very hard uh, but i will try a quick quick way to do that let me erase this okay just put down your questions while i'm erasing it to the points that you did not understand and i will explain those parts again and of course you can always come back and watch it again as well yeah i actually dragged this board from the office cuz i don't have this at home but i'm going to check your questions make sure they're there yeah try that board up okay let's see which part did you not understand Uh tell me which part you didn't understand. Quickly going to explain it again on the 45 day challenge we are doing you have to burn I have to burn you can decide your own 2000 calories per day I will eat only 1500 calories per day. Right? Creating a 500 calorie deficit. Okay, but it takes so if I burn 2000 eat 1500 I have 500 that has to come from somewhere which is from my deficit or it burns fat to give it to me. Now, you have to burn you means anybody has to burn 7000 additional calories to lose 1 kg of body fat. But if I'm only burning 500 or 500 is my deficit per day, 7000 divided by 500 is equal to 14. Hence it will take me 14 days to burn 1 kilo of body fat. Now, if I want to lose 10 kilos I would have to do 2000 calories every single day and eat only 1500 every single day to maintain 500 to burn 1 kilo in 14 days so in 10 so for 10 kilos I would need 1000 yeah 140 days this is realistic 2 kilos a month is actually phenomenal okay now so I'm checking the comments A 10k steps does not put pressure on the knees. 10k steps is not much. If this is becoming a problem, if someone has a knee issue, you don't have to do. This is movement. Nobody is asking you to walk at the same time. You can do cycling. You can do any form of activity, stationary bike cycling, anything that burns calories. It's as simple as that. If you don't burn this 2000, I'm getting 1300 from my BMR. I am getting neat or non-exercise things like the steps. If I do 10,000 steps, I will get 500. From my exercise, I have to get uh, another at least 200, right? Five, six, seven. Yeah, to get 2,000. If I don't do the steps and you do six, five thousand, six. If you let's say do five thousand, you burn 250, right? So if you burn 250, this number drops, which means it's now going to take you more than 14 days to burn one kilo of body fat. That is just the way the math works. There is no other way to do it. If you have a knee issue, uh, it is from probably being. If it is from being at a very high weight, then any way to reduce it, you can try um, stationary bike cycling. It has no, absolutely no pressure on the knees. You can try swimming, but ten thousand steps is not done at one time. It's just about moving through the day, and the body can actually handle that quite well. So we've done that, right? Ah. Uh, What is the other one? Now, why do some people now? One is tracking and efficiency. The BMR, if you're using the Harris Benedict formula, I would say take out 20% from it because it doesn't take into account any sort of uh, metabolic issues, hormonal issues, etc. Uh, in your steps, this 500 will depend on the intensity with which you do it as well. Some people will get more, some people will get less. Now, why in the same exercise? do some people get more some people get less so for example when i put it up i'm getting very little from my exercise i'm actually getting very little from many places because the fitter you get the more conditioned your heart gets it gets stronger and can handle the same thing better i'm not going to be as out of breath um as someone else at the same pace or time which is why i'm burning a little bit less if you're just starting out you will burn much more from exercise 
Okay, so now, very nice question. So now, how do we track? Now, we've got how much we're going to burn. We have to eat 1500 calories, right? 1500 is something that I've set for myself. This number will change. For example, if it was an athlete, she would probably be at about a thousand in exercise. Then her calories for eating would also go up. Now, this 1500 calories has to be broken down into protein, carbs, fats. You need all. Now, each of these can be broken down even further, right? The kinds of fat. Carbohydrate can be broken down into simple, into complex, uh, into fiber, insoluble fiber, resistance starch, soluble fiber. How 1500 calories is broken down depends on health, right? If you have PCOS, then I have, then your ratio of protein to carbs to fiber will depend on making sure that you, your sugar levels don't spike after each meal to take care of insulin resistance. If you have cholesterol, then I have to look at the kinds of fat, the kind of protein. If someone has high uric acid, then what kind of proteins are we giving them? Are they low purine? Are they high purine? So this division or customization is based on health parameters. But I ate a croissant today. How that happens is when you're trying to lose weight, in this 1500 calories, if you're looking at pure weight loss, not health parameters, then it doesn't matter what you eat at 1500 calories. So you could eat 1500 calories of croissant, 1500 calories of ice cream, 1500 calories of whatever you feel like. As long as you burn 2000, eat 1500 and keep a 500 deficit, you will still lose the weight. That doesn't mean you'll be healthy. But what it does mean, it gives us the ability to be a little bit flexible. So today when I ate the croissant, I ate half the croissant. It is about 150 to about 200 calories that came from car carbohydrates. All I needed to do is adjust my carbohydrate in my next meal so that I stay within my carbohydrate limit. That's all. Right. And I have to account for those 200 calories gone there. I can't eat 200 calories more. So when I ate that croissant, I was left with only 1300 calories. If I'd eaten the full croissant, I would have been left with only 1100 calories. So it depends on how we adjust it, but it can be only done once in a while and probably not on all the time because we're sacrificing health then and we don't want to sacrifice our health. So once in a while, flexible eating to eat about 20% of the things that you like will keep you sane. You won't need willpower. It'll keep you sane. You won't need willpower and you'll be able to do it um, easier. That's all instead of following a very strict protocol. But I'm doing it for 45 days and the rule is I will eat no deep fried food and dessert only once a week. Right? Those are the rules that I've created. You can do it with me if you like. Trapping efficiency. Now weight fluctuations. Today my weight went up. Why? Uh, your weight can go up First of all, to, to lose 1 kg of body fat, you need to burn 7,000 calories. To gain 1 kg of body fat, you need to eat an additional of 7,000 calories. Which means that if yesterday I was 63 and if today I am 64, does not mean I gained 1 kilo. Because to gain 1 kilo, I would have had to eat my normal 1,500 calories plus 7,000 calories. So I would have had to eat 8,500 calories yesterday to gain one kilo today. So what happened instead when my weight went up? Water resistant, uh, sorry, water retention, um, not enough sleep, all these things will show you weight fluctuations. And it is completely normal, even though I have been in a calorie deficit, I've been sticking to my 2000 calories, eating 1500 for the last week, my weight has not shown any change at all or because it's going to take 14 days to show the change, not five days. Right, so it is about remembering that because there's no point in me giving up because there was no change. There was not supposed to be any change uh, at all, right? Okay, then some people lose weight faster than others. Some people lose slower simply because their BMR is different. Men have more muscle mass, less body fat because they are men. We cannot change this. They have a higher BMR, so that means if they did the same thing in a day, they'd have a much higher deficit. Some people have naturally higher BMRs as well. They are also people who you will see are can eat more and you see that they don't gain weight. But they're also people who probably move around more without knowing. They fidget more, they're spinning, they're moving all the time, or they're adjusting. They're kind of people who say, oh, I ate a very heavy breakfast, so I'm not eating lunch. Or I had a very heavy lunch, so I won't eat dinner. Inadvertently, they are also adjusting. Apart from that, they probably have a higher BMR. A higher BMR just makes it easier. Now, some things like PCOS, 
uh, thyroid, etc., can lower your BMR. Now that means that earlier my BMR, if it was thousand, I just need. It doesn't mean you can't lose weight. It just means that you do need to do a little bit more in different places to still get, or yeah, seven maybe seven hundred there to still get two thousand. That means I'll have to do a little more steps and a little more exercise in the beginning to bring my BMR up. That's it. But you can still lose it. All right. Um, why you're not losing weight? If that is something that's happening to you, it is because you have to, this is where consistency comes in. I have to burn 2000 calories, eat only 1500. If I'm having a good day, bad day, it doesn't matter. Busy day, it doesn't matter. If I don't do it on even one day, then that one kg loss will not be 14 days, it'll become 15 days. If I don't do it in two days, it'll become 16 days, 17 days, 18 days, which is why consistency matters, right? Um, that is why you have to stay where you are. Also, most people will over or they will underestimate how much they eat. They'll think they're eating 1500, but they're actually eating 2000 or 3000 because they don't calculate everything. Everything has calories except for, let's say, plain coffee, tea without sugar, without milk, uh, water. These are things that don't have calories. Even if you have a pan, it has calories. If it has gulkan, then it has a ton of calories. Everything has calories in it. So you have to estimate everything. If you walk around the house and you say, oh, let me taste this, let me taste that. It's all calories. It adds to your 1500, whether you like it or not, right? So it either means you are, if you're not losing, it either means you didn't meet your calorie requirement or you didn't meet your burn requirement. One of the two is off. That's what it is. Or your BMR has been miscalculated. Okay. Now, so we've calculated all that. So that is sort of the basics of weight loss, fat loss, um, you used to want to wonder, okay, some people lose 12 kgs in one month, someone has asked, because on the program, we are actually looking at burning much more with the exercise, the excess, on the program, the reason that you've said that is, people are burning, they're losing 12 kgs in three months, because of consistency is one, we are getting all, we are getting the neat in, we, that's why we asked for 10,000 steps. But this is where a large chunk of it matters because all the exercise is built to have epoch, epoch, which means that it is burning a lot of calories after you finish exercising, which is why the nutrition will be, did you work out, did you work out, did you work out, did you work out? And we are so reluctant, like if you switch over to just doing walking, it's not going to burn as much. So the ones that really lose are the ones who follow through on both the exercise program and they send in all their meals every day so that she can check that it is not 2000, it is 1500. If it is higher, why is there so much oil in this? Tarka is too much. This looks a little bit oily. Can you reduce it? She's checking constantly, constantly, constantly to make corrections. And if that doesn't happen, we change it. Normal body weight loss will be 0.5% to 1% a week, right? Now, if you are 100 kilos losing 1 kg a week, is easy right if you are so it really depends where you are and how much effort you put in a lot of people are willing to do a little more neat they are willing to do a little bit more of the other stuff and the food that we have prepared someone has asked how do you break up the 1500 this 1500 will depend completely on sort of health issues uh, it depends how much protein carbohydrate fats and how we divide it up People who lose are people usually which who had hormonal issues, did not know about it. Let's say you have PCOS, they lose very well because we try to fix the insulin resistance with the food. We're making sure the meals don't uh, spike your sugar levels, which is why it causes the kind of sort of weight loss that it causes, but it comes with consistency. If they are not consistent, even if you're on the program, the tools are there. If you don't use them, it won't work. Um, uh, if you include the steps, I mean, if you include the step during workout, then you have a little bit of an overlap, right? Here. So then what I would do is, I would just look at your watch and look at your target calories. If you're meeting your target calories, it's okay. Now, just remember, these target calories can only come if you have a watch that has heart rate tracking. Otherwise, they can't get your calories, right? And then also, you can assume there is a 15 to 20% error here. Yeah? But if you meet your calorie burn goal, it's fine. Doesn't matter. Mm. All right, uh, I think I've got all the questions sorted. Okay, 
Any other questions? Uh, we are we have exactly four minutes to go. So I can take any more questions or we can close it. I've covered everything from how to create the deficit and how to uh, keep that deficit. So let me know if you need me to cover anything else. I'm going to look at the comments again. Okay. Uh, also, one of the things that someone's asked for the programs, we are actually targeting in many cases, depending on the program. So. Uh, you'll see it only on the reboot with dumbbells that we can target a much higher level of calorie burn. Uh, in the low impact program, in the gym program, because of the way they're structured to prevent jumping, to prevent all that, the, the calorie split of the deficit is slightly lower, which is why we say that it is low on those. The reboot one, which is with dumbbells, is the highest deficit that we can create because of the structure of the exercises that lets us, allows us to do that. Okay. How frequently should we be assessing weight loss? I would look at taking my weight once a week, ideally under the same conditions. So let's say Friday morning, uh, post using the loo at the same time, same scale, and just track that and track measurements and take pictures because all of them together give you a realistic picture. Yeah, anything, any others or we will close. Mm. I'm just seeing. Have I got everybody? Okay. Someone asked maintenance calories. When you're on maintenance calories, maintenance basically means at the end of the week you didn't gain, you didn't lose. It's not called stagnation, it's called maintenance. When you're on maintenance, you can play around with your macros based on your lifestyle a little bit. Yeah, and it won't really matter as long as the main thing is to make sure that you meet your protein goal. As long as you're maintaining your protein goal, everything else should be fine. Right. How much protein you need to eat will depend on your present body weight, your the kind of exercise you are doing. It will depend on target body weight or if you're trying to lose weight, how much has to be lost, whether you have high uric acid, if you have any of those issues. Right. So it's not a blanket number. It's sort of a we have to calculate that number. But the minimum would be 0 0.8 grams per kilo of body weight. Um, if one chooses body recomposition a program, do they lose weight as well? Body recomposition is for people looking to lose between 1 and 5 kilos of body fat. It is for people who are actually not very large, are struggling with the last parts and the, the weight is not as important as the change in measurements. It's the difference from being skinny fat uh, to being fit really. So the while your body fat might drop, the muscle will also increase giving you a much nicer shape. It changes the way your body looks but will not reflect as much on the scale, which is why it is mentioned that it is between one and five kilos of body fat loss. If you're looking at below over five kilos, you think you have more to lose, then weight loss is the right goal. Okay, uh, fitness watch brand. I would say if you have a fitness watch brand, you would pick one which is which has heart rate monitor in it, or none of them 100% accurate. So just pick one that fits in your budget, right? Um, I'm 58 kgs, have mommy belly, want to tone without losing weight, do I need to watch calories further, just workouts with help. You have to do both because if you can be a low weight but you can be medically obese if your body fat percentage is high, right? So I would say you have to do workouts and eat right. This is a classic case of body recomposition. Kanika says, can we trust the calorie information printed at the back of food items? Uh, food items have, uh, again, they are allowed a 20% margin of error. Some brands will actually keep testing different different batches and then keep uh, doing their calories okay. The others will just do calculations online based on what they know has gone into it. I would say again, it's about off and they allow the 20% margin of error, right? It just is. Um, all right, I think I've carried. Can you explain calorie consumption tracking for non-packaged food? A non-packaged food, again, all foods have already been calculated in multiple national databases. In India, we have a national Indian uh, database. We have one in the US. There are multiple of them where it is calculated per thing, whether it's cooked, uncooked, uh, boiled, all that has already been calculated in its raw form. I would recommend not using a calorie tracker that has recipes in it that tells you like dal ka recipe, this ka recipe, because the recipe might not be the same. But if you're doing it, it will be done per ingredient. That is available easily online on multiple sources. I'm unable to control junk. How to control? If you have an issue with controlling junk, this is a gut microbiome issue. It's a complete gut issue. We can do that in a completely different 
uh, section, but basically your bad bacteria or the one that feeds off the junk has completely increased, which is why it's craving more. This takes a little bit of resetting that gut microbiome uh, to really reduce it. But I mean, if you even tried any of the programs and just followed it for maybe two weeks, you'll see the complete change because of the amount of uh, fiber, the amount of probiotics and all the other things that we put in there. All right. I think we've covered um, everything at the moment. Yeah, someone has asked for diastasis recti. We will be including that very soon as well. But I hope that helped. You can also put in more things whenever you want. Did I? Yeah. Um, put in more we'll come back and answer uh, make sure you stay on the whatsapp channel as well so that you will get updates i'll try to put some of this there as well thank you so much for joining us if you have any more questions that you think need to be answered go to the website we have a whatsapp chat there as well you can go in there and ask one of us if you have a question and we'd like to help you as much as we can with whatever information we have about you thank you for joining us and i'll see you next week it was so nice to have you here Make sure you follow my story so that you do this with me. Thank you.